If you have a <clears throat> copy of God's Word with you today, I ask that you turn to 2 Samuel chapter 11. And while you're looking at that passage of Scripture, I went by to see somebody the other day and she said it was her birthday last Sunday and she thought she was going to get by with it. <laughs> but Kay, happy late birthday. <laughs> She's the Volkswagen queen of New Orleans. <laughs> okay. Chapter 11. Begin reading here in verse 1. Pay close attention to these um, reading here of this word. And it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when the kings go forth to battle that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel. And they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabath. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in at evening time that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired about the woman, and one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Elam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent measures and took her, and she came forth unto him and laid with him, for she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. And the woman conceived and sent and told David, and said, I am with child. May God add his blessing to this portion of the reading of his word.
Amen. That was good singing. One of our favorite characters in the Bible, I, was, I think we all probably will agree, or probably the one we're most familiar with, is probably King David. Uh, back when we was little kids in Sunday school, uh, hardly a lesson would come up that it wouldn't have something to do with King David. We all know the story of him and Goliath. It's been told for many, many years, and it never gets old. And as a kid, I would love when those Sunday school teachers that I was so blessed with would talk about David and Goliath. Uh, it, it was almost like he was there on the battlefield when it happened. They were just that gifted. But... I want to speak today on the danger of being at ease. That's a bad place to be. David is a popular man at this point in his life. Uh, everybody in the surrounding areas knew who he was. He's very popular. The ladies loved him. Oh, did the ladies love him. And the men wanted to be like him. And the king at that time, Saul, hated him more and more. When David entered the city from the return from the slaughter of the Philistines, the women came out of all the cities of Israel singing and dancing as David came to meet Saul. As the women uh, singing, Saul killed his thousands, but David his tens of thousands, which rubbed Saul the wrong way. He didn't like that. He was a very jealous man. But David enjoyed moments like that, wouldn't you? David had an exciting life. I don't think there's nobody in the Bible who had a more of exciting life than David. Sometimes on the run. Sometimes hiding in caves. Sometimes enjoying great victories. He had an exciting life. And if you would say that, you would be correct. He had an exciting life. When David became king, he proved that he was well able to lead his people. He was a quite successful military genius. If you look in the Bible at all the <clears throat> battles that he was in, he was victorious. Uh, he, he was gifted in this area, being a great military genius. He had great men of war that surrounded him as they discussed military operations. But most of all, the people loved him, and he knew it. And he was a great king, and he knew it. He was a great military commander, and he knew it. He was good looking, and he knew it. That's always a dangerous combination when a person feels that way about themselves. Gifted, no doubt. Confident, most assuredly. I said many times in studying the life of David and preaching about him, he was Israel's greatest king. But most forget, or don't even like to think about it, David had a lousy personal life. It was terrible. He was a terrible father. You remember his daughter, Tamar. 
and how her brother came in, Amon and Amon, or have you say his name? <laughs> he came in and he raped her. And David did nothing about it. He doesn't speak to her for one year. He just leave her alone. If a daughter needed a father, it was at that time that he never ever goes around her for one year. Sin has its consequences, folks. You can be forgiven, but you can't turn back the time to erase it. So let's investigate this morning at the danger of being at ease. And the great price David paid for being at ease. Folks, I want to stop right here to tell you, and I want you to listen to me carefully. If you are not wholehearted, committed for living for Christ, you at ease. And that's a dangerous place to be in the life of a Christian. As a matter of fact, you may be on the outskirts of a backslidden condition. It's just around the corner. Remember Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Now if you're not doing that, you at ease. Or you're already in a backslidden condition. Did you notice it didn't say with some of your heart? It didn't say that. Did you notice it didn't say with three-fourths of your heart? It didn't say that. It said with all your heart. Now, where are you this morning? What, which one of those are you this morning? And that was really what was wrong with David and his heart at this time in his life. David uh, was in a backslidden condition. Now I want to get something straight here before we go any further. Some people believe that a person is backslidden, they're lost again. It don't say that. It don't teach that. A person that's in a backslidden condition, they're not going forward in Christ. They're going backwards. They're still saved. They're just going backwards. And it's not a fun place to be. I've been there. You've been there probably. It's not a fun place to be. David's heart had become cold and indifferent with God. And when you and I get that way, God has his way of getting our attention, doesn't he? You know, you've never been whipped to God whips you. I've said this a many a time. My mama, she'd have been a good prison guard. You wouldn't talk back to her. You do as you say, or she will whip you. But of all the whippings I've ever had, there's nothing compared to when God whips you. He does it not because he hates you, it's because he loves you. But David at this time, his heart had been cold and indifferent. There are four things that I, that I want us to pay attention to and look at this morning that I think we can see that it turned David's heart cold. And we need to be aware of it. There's four things. First one is this. David became at ease at being king. He became ease at that. See, most kings get rid of their competitors. If there's someone around them that could threaten the throne, he get rid of them. There's King Herod. You know, when Jesus was born... Then wise men mention a king. That's all it took. Herod being a, a sinful man, a, a mean man, a terrible king. Well, go find him and let me know. I'll come worship him. Yeah, he was going to come worship him, all right. He'd have found him. He'd have killed him. <clears throat> they didn't return. So what did he do? 
every male child under the age of two he had killed. They get rid of their competitors. But David didn't have to do that. He never had to worry about a competitor. You know why? The people loved him. <clears throat> they adored him. There was nothing like King David. He was undisputed king of Israel. But the problem was he became at ease at being king. He broke protocol by staying at home when the other kings was off to war. That was his first big mistake. Now, the Bible clearly tells us that it was a time of the year when the kings went off to do battle. But David stayed at home. He broke protocol. Most of you know that, yeah, I'll just give you an example. Before I had my knee replaced, I had to go through this and that, and they just kept doing this and that. And finally they decided, well, it's time to replace it. They protocol they go through. I don't know why they just can't go. We need to replace your leg to start with. But they was protocol broken here. David stayed at home when the other kings were gone off to fight wars. He was taking a risk. And you see that there in verse 1, 11th chapter, because it said that it came to pass that the year was expired and the time when the kings go forth to battle and David sent Joab, his servants, with him and all Israel and they destroyed the children and it went on and right there at the end. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. So he was king. He was a good king. He was a beloved king. I can do what I want to. That's a terrible, terrible plight to be in when you think you can do what you want to. But he took a mighty big risk. He broke the seventh commandment by staying home. But there was more commandments to break coming. He broke a commandment. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Now folks, I'm going to tell you some. I don't know too many men that would be out on their balcony at night and they happen to look down and see a woman bathing herself. Now the Bible says that Bathsheba was a beautiful woman. I don't know too many men that wouldn't have looked at her and probably had lust in their heart. Unless he was a homosexual or something, he may not have been not interested in her. But a hot-blooded male would have, whoo, Lord have mercy. But David looked and he lusted. Now if he'd have been off the war, that, would, that event would have never happened, would it? If he would have been with his soldiers, that would have never happened. You know, them soldiers would have felt mighty proud to know that their king was in that battle with them, wasn't it? Not only was he going to send them to war, he was going to be in it with them. But no, not David. He was at ease at being the king. Many Christians become at ease and that is so dangerous. Listen closely. It doesn't matter how far away you are from God. It's that first cooling off that's so dangerous. It's the very first time you get cold towards God is so dangerous. There's another reason that David found himself in trouble. He became at ease being loved. Now I love to tell the nail all the time I love her. Now sometimes she tells me no because she's tired of me asking her that. And then sometimes she tells me, well, I'll let you know later on. <laughs> we was out there in the swing yesterday night and I reached over to kiss her. And she said no. She was afraid somebody was going to see us out there kissing. 
but I love her. I tell her that quite often. I wake her up at night. And that's when she tells me no. <laughs> but I just love to hear her, yeah, I love you. But David became at ease being loved. You remember how the women would come out there in the street and sing, Saul had killed his thousands, but David his tens of thousands. So he got to thinking about, man, it's nice to be king. It's nice to be loved. You see, the crown got too big for his head. He walked around with the Lord. But listen, those walks became shorter and shorter. While his lust became stronger and stronger. Now I want to say something about this. David was 50 years old when this event happened. Now I could understand a 20, 25 year old man looking down, Woo! look what I see. The hot blood of a young man, I can understand that, but David was 50 years old. He knew better. But he was lusting after this woman. So he sent for her. Now I'm going to tell you something, folks. This is <laughs> it's amazing how you, when you look at this story closely, how the Lord reveals things to you. Because David was at ease, the trap was set. My people love me too much to get rid of me. That's what David was thinking. My people love me. They understand I made a mistake. They will look the other way. Besides, most of these men here probably made the same mistake I made. But the one big difference, they love me. His plot got bigger as his sin got deeper. And his victim he, his actions involved other people. Did you notice that? He involved other people in his scheme. Don't think David didn't plan all this out. Don't you think these things just happened? Oh, he planned this out. <clears throat> There's a third reason why David was at ease. Not only David was at ease at being a king, not only because he was... Uh, uh, it loved, but thirdly, he became at ease because he was a dead beat dad. <clears throat> now, in verses 5 through 15, you see this. He proved this by the actions he had taken against Uri. He was not concerned for that child at that moment, he wanted to cover up his sin. You see, <clears throat> This child couldn't help but being born. It wasn't the child's fault at all. It was David's fault. And at that moment, David didn't care nothing about that child. You know, we hear a lot about dead beat child. I mean, dead beat fathers who won't take care of the children. I got a friend named Robert Webster. He thinks I like Jerry Springer, okay? He thinks I like him. I'd be up at the lake and he'd be coming up the road and I see him coming up the dirt road there and I and I find Jerry Springer on TV because he can't stand him. And I go, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. And he'll come around there with a net. Carl watches that, don't he? I bet he's getting sermons out of it, isn't he? And I'll be in there, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. <clears throat> It just blows his mind. But from time to time, they have deadbeat dads on there who will not take care of their children. And they have them on there and they expose them. But David was that way for a little while because, you see, he was more concerned in covering up with his sin than that little baby that him and Bathsheba had had. He was more concerned about that. So he involved these other people. He was comfortable being that way. David's sin made him a criminal according to the law. 
Did you know the sin of adultery carried with it the mandatory death penalty? <clears throat> he was in trouble and he knew it. Yeah. He had broken the law. He was a, he was a criminal now. But he was still working to cover up his sin. Sometimes we get in trouble and we try to cover up our sins. It doesn't work. David, again, was trying to cover up his sin. But David thought his sin was covered up by Uriah dying on the battlefield. Oh, yeah, I'm going to tell you. Poor old David. He sent for Uriah to come home. He said, I want you to take a few days off from war. Now, you want to talk about a devoted soldier, Uriah was that one. Instead of going home, being with his wife, he goes and <clears throat> stays with the, the other soldiers. Now, you couldn't get, be the better soldier than that. Uh, most men would have went home to be with their wives, if you know what I mean. But not you, right? David found out about it, and he really gets hot. He tells him to do this. He wouldn't do that. He said, this man must be gone crazy. Don't he know if he don't go home and sleep with his wife... That they're going to find out is, man, I got to fix this. Now this is where it gets worse. He sends word to Joab. He said, I'm going to send Uriah there and I want you to put him in the heat of the battle. And when it really, really gets bad, pull away from him. Let him die. Now don't you know Jab got a scratch in his head and wondering, has David lost his mind? He said, he, he, why would he want to do, do this? Why would he want to kill this man? Let me tell you something else that sort of bogged him. The letters that he sent to Joab was sent by Uriah. Uriah took his own death warrant to Joab. Isn't that something? All he had to do, now I'm going to tell you something. Don't give me a letter if you don't want me to peep into it. <laughs> I just have to peep into it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Linnell gets mail sometime with her name on it. If it looks important, I'll peep in there. <laughs> Did you look at my mail? Me? <laughs> But Joab, being a loyal soldier as he was, wouldn't dare take a peep in that letter. But he was carrying his own death warrant. Isn't that something? How low could you get? He sends the letter. The thing that David wanted to happen, happened. But I want to look for a minute at the scenes behind Bathsheba's family. This is interesting. <clears throat> David's sin with her was all the more terrible because of this. Bathsheba was the daughter of Elam, who was one of David's 30 personal bodyguards. Isn't that something? <laughs> How bad could it get? The daughter of one of his personal bodyguards was Bathsheba. The grandfather was one of David's chiefest counselor. Interesting that this happened because he was the grandfather of Uriah. Let me tell you, that's pretty bad, isn't it? That these people there to protect David, to give him advice. That was his granddaughter. That was his daughter and his grandson all mixed up there together. Yeah, it was very costly for David. 
But David, lastly, oh, this is terrible. David had killed before, folks. This is not the first time that David's killed somebody. But this is the first time he's killed somebody and was trying to cover it up. David broke four of the last five commandments. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. And thou shalt not covet. <laughs> Isn't that something? And he was a man after God's own heart. David became at ease at being a murderer. He was a murderer. When you get comfortable with your sins, look for God wake up call because it will come. <laughs> David initiated this entire deed from beginning to end. There was no way to escape. He ignored, I mean, he could have got out of this. When he sent for Bathsheba, one of the servants says, now listen, this is how, there's a way to get out of it. Isn't she the wife of your right? Just a reminder of David that she was a married woman. You see what I mean? Right there should have been a red flag, but not for David. See, God provided a way that he could have got out of this. I'm telling you, it's something when you read this over and over again. And by the way, there was no indictment at Bathsheba at all. Did you notice that? If you look through there, you won't find nowhere where she was indicted at all. Because this was David's and David's alone. She was, the king was, had his way. You don't say no to a king because it can cost you your life. But there's no indictment of Bathsheba at all. David instructed Uriah to carry out his own death warrant. How cold could that be? Joab did all of David's dirty work. But David got what he wanted. Uriah's dead. He married Bathsheba. And now, guess what? He wasn't a deadbeat dad. Now he was going to be a dad. But you know what happened in that situation. He thought he had it made. But guess who came knocking on the door? Nathan the prophet. I bet his finger was 15 inches long. And he got there and told David a little story. And when he got through, David got something mad he couldn't stand it. And he took that big old finger and pointed, he said, Thou art the man. Woo, I love to have been a fly on the wall that day. <laughs> to see the expression that King David had. He was found out. But you know what Nathan done told him? He said, you're not going to die because of this. God's going to put away your sin. But the sword will never leave your house. His children fought all the time. Every time he walked on the rooftop, he remembered that night he walked on the rooftop. Every time his children argued, he remembered that the sword would never leave his house. Folks, there's consequences for sin. Now the question in closing. Are you at ease today? Are you at ease? Do you have that burning desire in your heart to serve the Lord? Are you on fire for him? If not, you are at ease and what you're going to do about it. The decision is yours. Heavenly Father, as we come at this invitation time, Lord, you know the condition of every single heart here this morning. You know whether we're on fire for you or the flame's about to go out. And I pray this morning that a fire from heaven will come down. 
and catch our hearts on fire for you that we will never ever be at ease that we will always have a constant fire burning in our souls bless this invitation for we asked it in Christ's name amen <laughs>